audience I've ever seen here at 700 Calumet. One more time, because you're awesome! Yes! You guys, you guys, I'm going home. That was it, it doesn't get better than that. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Again, we're at Denver Open Media. We're at 700 Calumet. It's going to be an incredibly awesome show. Tonight, we've got a lineup. Um, well, I don't, I don't even know if we deserve it. it. It's so good. It's so good. We've got El Javi tonight. We've got three comedians. Yeah. Yeah. We, and, and, and thank you. And additionally, additionally, we have our, uh, our nonprofit spotlight. It's Latin Life Denver. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I want to do some housekeeping really, really quickly. We have some sponsors, and uh, you guys are the best at applause. So let's save our sponsor applause for the very, very end when, when they all deserve it the most. Let's take a look at those sponsors. Um, currently, we have Westward as a sponsor. Thank you so much, Westward. Sexy Pizza. Additionally, we have Sex Pot Comedy and Crazy Mountain Brewery. Uh, Intrepid Sojourner, really good stuff. And El Cubanasso, and I, it's a food truck outside. I, I know I screwed that up. I apologize. Comedy Works, really, really excellent. KGNU, is that it? No, I have two more. Dos Equis and Takate. Yes. Yeah, come on. Thanks for our sponsors. You know, it's, it's May 4th. It's the first Friday of May. And this might be my very favorite first Friday. And it's because... What we see here at Open Media Foundation and Denver Open Media on the first Friday of May is something that's a little bit more culturally representative of this neighborhood. It feels good, it feels right, and I appreciate every single one of you for being here tonight. I want to also broaden outside of our community just a little bit and talk about the current state of media. Well, I don't really want to talk about it because <laughs> because I won't do a good enough job. But I do have someone here in the wings waiting to talk about what's going on in the media landscape right now. We, want, we have a quick little uh, introduction here from our executive director, Tony Shawcross. Thank you, Brandon. Brandon does such a good job of getting everybody's mood up. Now I'm gonna like, take it down and make everybody depressed for a little bit. Uh, no, I do also appreciate everybody being here. If you aren't paying attention, it is a weird time right now, not just in the world, in the country, in, in the media, and especially in like our local media. And so the kind of stuff that's happening here tonight with Open Media Foundation, the, the gaps that, uh, that the community journalists, community uh, producers here at the Open Media Foundation fill, it's so important. Recognizing and partnering with an organization like Latin Life Denver is super important tonight. Uh, there's, there, you know, if you haven't paid attention, um, we've lost, uh, it's just such a weird time in the media. If you pay attention to media, I know sometimes it's just like what's going on in the world or something like that, but, uh, you know, we've got these crazy news organizations that are just like rising through the ranks and, and people are paying so much attention to these like pundits and, and channels like, I don't even want to say any of their names because... I just don't want to give them any more attention, but hopefully you guys kind of know some of these media organizations that I'm talking about that have really no journalistic integrity, and yet the few institutions that are left that are about feeding the, the democracy of America with the information they need to make informed decisions are, are dying. And, uh, and what's going on right now in Denver and Boulder is, is that. You guys are all watching firsthand what Movies like Network warned us about, uh, you know, 30-some years ago. Or that's 40-some years ago now. 41 years ago, Network came out. That's the I'm mad as hell. I'm not going to take any more if you guys remember that movie. <laughs> anyway, that movie warned us about the shit that's been happening for the last 40 years. We aren't changing it. And um, two of the, like, most, two, two of, of, of Colorado's, like, strongest voices for what, the media and the fourth estate is supposed to be about have both uh, both left the journalism uh, world and their positions this week. Uh, can I read the quote from Chuck Plunkett really quick? So uh, he's the editorial um, director for, for uh, the Denver Post. Uh, he just quit his job. He was trying to, before we read this, sorry, <laughs> come back to me for a second. He was trying to uh, post an article, an editorial uh, in, in the Denver Post about the removal of Dave Krieger uh, from the Denver, from the Daily Camera up in Boulder. Uh, the same hedge fund owns both the Denver Post and the Daily Camera. 
and uh, both these opinion editors were trying to remark on the kinds of changes and shrinkages that, that are happening under this hedge fund. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, I don't really know. I don't have a great perspective on this. I don't know what, uh, what we can all do about it, but it seems to me like the business model of these hedge funds is to buy these media organizations, completely dismantle them and just dis get rid of anything that they've been doing and just rely on the fact that it's gonna take about 10 years for them to stop generating revenue. So these hedge funds buy these newspapers, destroy them, keep collecting subscription revenues for 10 or 15 years from like, from like loyal fans, and then by the time that the Denver Post is no more, they've gotten their investment back uh, because they just crippled these organizations. So, you know, from an outside perspective, that's what I think is happening. But uh, so the Daily Camera was trying to write about this. The the, the editorial director got fired. Uh, Chuck Plunkett was trying to write about this at the Post about what had happened to Daily Camera. He wasn't allowed to publish uh, what he w wrote, and so he he resigned. So these are people with actual journalistic integrity that we are losing, while these people with absolutely none who run sites and stations that, again, I don't even want to name, but one has initial IW, one starts with a B. Uh, these things are gaining so much attention, because it, but it's not journalism, it's not media. So let's read this quote from Chuck Plunkett as he left the Denver Post this week. Our obligation is to the reader and the truth. We should not be allowing ourselves to be quiet about something that our own people are doing that would be considered dangerous, bad for our communities and bad for our democracy. Uh, so again, this is a guy who cares about what the fourth estate is supposed to be doing and uh, really has to quit his job in order, in order to stand up for what he believes in. Meanwhile, his institution is, is dying uh, and, and all of our journalistic institutions in this town are dying. And this entity right here, the Open Media Foundation, is under significant threat um, as well. So, uh, you know, what can we do? I'm not here to just make you all depressed like I am. I'm, uh, I'm also here to like talk about what we can do about it. So the one thing that you could do, I don't know how to fix this problem. We're in a, a deep problem that's taken a long time for it, for it to come about. But the one thing you guys could do right now is if there are any sources of inf information that you care about, if there are any resources, media institutions, radio stations you listen to, TV stations you watch, uh, websites that you like that are sources of information that you really value. Uh, the one thing you guys could do right now is just log on to that site, log on to their website, and pay for that information that you're doing. Just one time, go to Wikipedia and click on that donate page, or or go to the Denver Post and when the pop up uh, when the pop up paywall comes up, instead of just opening an incognito window, which is what I do, <laughs> and pasting that same uh, URL in there, just pay them the five dollars for once. So that's one thing. Sorry about the language. Uh, that's one thing we can all do right now. If you have a source of information that you value, just one time, just go and give them give them a little bit of money, give them a little bit of love, because we need the fourth estate. We need these Not sources of information. Bus, it's just that have <laughs> that's my like hook. That's my shepherd's hook to get off the stage. So uh, thank you very much. And one of those great uh, media institutions that you could be supporting right now is Latin Life Denver. We're going to watch a little video uh, to learn about Latin Life Denver and the important gap that they're filling here in Denver. We're so lucky to have them partnering tonight and so lucky to have them in our community. My name is Tony Shawcross. Thank you very much.
So I have a guest. I we I we just you know uh, everybody. This is Joe. Hey, yeah, thank you, uh, Joe. We just saw we saw a lot of dancing, but that's not just Latin Life Denver. I want to know what is Latin Life Denver. Well, Latin Life Denver is an independent media corporation. I mean, not a corporation, an uh, independent media outlet. And just to touch a little bit on what Tony talked about. We can no longer depend on corporate media to serve as a voice. And as Latinos, I don't think corporate media has ever really represented us. We've always really had to be our own independent voice, find our independent channels to get our messages out. I go back to the days of El Diario de la Gente in Boulder, at CU in Boulder. Uh, but I also worked for Channel 7 for 30 years before I, too, was shown the door when everything was cut back. We eliminated public affairs programming. That was the first to go. And now, really, all you see on television is just news. You don't see public affairs programming anymore because they really don't care. Like he talked about, it's the bottom line. So with Latin Life Denver, we seek to give a voice to our community. There's so many great things. Yeah, there's the Salsa Bachata Festival that I, I bet most of you don't even know about, but it takes place every year here in Denver. They're celebrated throughout the world, and you saw a little bit of the dancers that go on there. But we just don't do entertainment. We use that as a vehicle to get your attention. Once we have your attention, it's like, hey, here's something else you should, be, you should be paying attention to. What about DACA? What about all these other things that are going on? Our tagline is connecting communities and cultures because we want to really cross over. We don't want to be by Latinos for Latinos. We really want to do, be a forum so, of understanding and communication, that bridge of, of, of understanding one another. And that's really what we seek to do. So yeah, we want to give a voice to a lot of the people and a lot of the things that aren't usually displayed. You know, like I mentioned, there is so much talent in our community, so many people doing so many things. And you guys show that a lot here on Denver Open Media. And I was surprised to hear you guys are under attack. We can't afford to lose you guys. You are a valuable resource to this community. And without you guys, we're going to have a hard time too. You know, but we need to be more of an independent voice. We cannot depend on, like I mentioned, corporate media. I'm sad to see the editor, the, the editorial editor for the Denver Post. I was so upset by that I canceled my subscription today because I'm like, no, I'm not going to contribute to your corporate bottom line. That's just, it's not right that you're silencing voices that don't agree with your money-making endeavors. And so, yeah, Latin Life Denver, that's what we're about. So you'll see a lot of the stuff that we're bringing. We're launching Latin Life America. We were just in Miami last week, launching LatinLifeAmerica.com and Latin Life America Radio and Television, which we'll be doing right here on this stage. And it'll be a subsidiary of Latin Life Denver, but we are going to be featuring the best of Latino media from throughout the United States and from throughout the world, and being an umbrella organization for all the wonderful things that people are doing. It was so fantastic to be down in Miami for Hispanic Because I thought, well, well, you know what, Latin Life Denver is a little bit unique. No, there are 3,000 other Latino content creators creating all kinds of media, from radio to television to music and beyond. And we're going to showcase that and let the rest of the world know what's happening with Latino media in the rest, so that we can all gather a better understanding of one another and be able to... To, to, to grow as a society, to understand ourselves as a society and not be divided in these crazy times we're going through. We need to combat that. We just can't accept that. We need to go forward. We need to grow. We can't allow ourselves to be defeated by corporate or by politics. Incredible. Yeah, seriously, seriously. Incredible, valuable work you're doing. You mentioned the mission of, of connecting communities, and, and I wonder what... You mentioned a lot of the ways that you're working towards doing that just now. And I'm wondering what, when you're, when you're talking about connecting communities, what exactly do you hope that looks like? And, and, and I know that, uh, that that's a big question, but if you can imagine for a moment your ideal world where these communities, where you've succeeded in your mission, what looks different than today? Well, what it would be is a free marketplace of ideas, where as journalists, and we are journalists first, we're not entertainers, you know, we do cover a lot of that kind of stuff, but we also cover a lot of serious media. But the idea is to contribute to the free marketplace of ideas and let the viewer, let the listener, let the reader make up their mind as to what the truth is and not feed it to them, as it was, this is happening in so much media today, as, you, as Tony talked about earlier, how we're being spoon-fed this selective media, and depending on what side of the fence you fall on, you watch that particular genre that reinforces whatever beliefs that you, you you adhere to. Well, our idea is let's throw out some other ideas. Let's throw out some other truths. And let's, let, let's 
really provide that free marketplace of ideas where you can decide really what's going on and not be conditioned, programmed, uh, or, or allow yourself to be manipulated by corporate media. I appreciate the work you're doing. I do, um, I do want to know why Latin Denver is here tonight, why what's happening tonight is happening uh, r right before Cinco de Mayo, what Cinco de Mayo means to you, what Cinco de Mayo might mean to an American, uh, a non-Latino. I want to know. I want to know all of these things. Why Cinco de Mayo? What? How do you perceive Cinco de Mayo? Tell me. Tell me all about it, and then we're going to throw to a video. Well, you know, Cinco de Mayo is really that conglomeration of collaboration between not just Latinos but the entire population that makes up our society. And really, when we look at Cinco de Mayo, we look at what happened at Cinco de Mayo. It was dating back to 1862 when a Mexican forced out the French from Mexico. It was the last time that a foreign power invaded North America. And as a result of that, it really did help the United States. You know, several people don't know this, but a lot of Americans fought alongside the Mexicans in re re repulsing the French invasion. The French wanted to take over Mexico, but they also wanted to take over the southern U.S. The Civil War was going on at the time. Uh, the French wanted to make a big push for Louisiana, for, south, for the south of the United States. American soldiers, knowing that, helped push back the French forces during those times. In fact, uh, uh, several American troops marched in the celebration parade in Mexico City, celebrating the victory of Cinco de Mayo. And so really, we could be living in a much different society right now had it not been for that collaboration between the American and the Mexican soldiers fighting against the French to uh, make sure that, that that the outcome turned out the way it did. So you know, it's, it's really interesting. So that's really what, what we're about. We're talking about Developing a society where we all can work together, struggle together, grow together, and make a better society as a whole. So, you know, as, as you know, large part of the United States was, southwestern United States was Mexico. Yeah. You know, so now look at where we are today. You know, we're, we're wanting to build walls. We're wanting to divide each other. Well, you know, we need to stand up to that. We need to fight that. And we need to do it as, as, as a group as, and, 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 w and through truth. You know, providing real information to people so that they can decide what is right and what is wrong. Uh, again, just so good and so valuable. Thank you. I, I want to throw it to some comic relief here before we get to the comedy. Joe, thank you so much for being here. Latin Life Denver, thank you so much. Let's, let's watch this video. Let's check it out. Not to be a, a buskill, it's just that Americans have some Misconceptions. Does anyone know the real meaning of Cinco de Mayo? Serious well, right now? <laughs> Yo, it's Mexico's Independence Day. Oh, man. Well, I'm folding right there. That is a mistake. You know, I know Cinco de Mayo might sound like 4th of July, but it's not our Independence Day. It's like not even close. In Mexico, Cinco de Mayo really is just the 5th of May. But Americans, geez, you, you guys love Cinco de Mayo. You drink tequila. Tequila! You even wear sombreros. Get your hands off my sombrero, baby. And you guys drink more tequila. Tequila, tequila. Here's a quick history lesson. <sighs> in 1862, the American Civil War was raging, and it was hurting the French economy, because the North was blocking the South from selling cotton to the other countries, like France. So the Emperor of France, yes, Napoleon the Third, easily the worst Napoleon, sent his troops to Mexico. The main reason he did it was to collect the debt from the Mexican government, but historians say he also wanted to set up a base to support the South so that they could end the Civil War and get the cotton flowing again. But those plans were ruined by outnumbered group of Mexicans like myself who rose up and defeated the French invaders who were occupying the small town of Puebla. So when you think about it, Cinco de Mayo is a celebration of the Mexican people doing their part to make sure the good guys won the Civil War. So if you're one of those beautiful Americans who loves to celebrate Cinco de Mayo, you should probably make sure you're celebrating what Mexicans have done for the U.S. too. Because while tequila shots and tacos and enchiladas and tortas are amazing, Mexicans have contributed a whole lot more to the U.S. culture. Like in the 1960s, when Chicano artists used their bold and innovative style to fight for the equal rights of all Mexican Americans. Or on the same time, when Sir Chavez was making 
making his own mark on American history by fighting for the rights of farm workers all across the country. And then there's the youth activists of today who are fighting for the rights of undocumented Mexican Americans to build a life in the only country they've ever known and to be treated with respect and dignity. So here's the real deal. Instead of assuming Americans are just using Cinco de Mayo as an excuse to get sloppy drunk and wear Mexican culture as costume, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Go ahead and celebrate the history of Cinco de Mayo. Drink your shots, eat your tacos, wear your sombreros. Actually, don't, don't wear the sombreros. It's no bueno. It's just a bad look. But make sure that you also recognize Cinco de Mayo as a day that Mexicans stepped up and make a major contribution to the U.S. history and celebrate the fact that we've been doing just that ever since. You is in Mexico. We are hermanos. Viva Mexico! Share this video if you want to celebrate Mexican culture every day. Yeah, so I, I feel like we, we've successfully done our job in giving you the substance, the, like the, the, you know, the, the intellectual substance for the night, and now I'd really like to move on to the entertainment piece. Are you guys ready for some comedians? Yeah, come on. Yeah, we're going to have so much fun with these comedians. We've got three of them right now, and we're going to start with our friend, Gabby Gutierrez-Reed. Here she is. Thanks for being here, Gabby. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, how are you? How are you tonight? <laughs> I wish that would happen in real life. You just ask someone, how are you? And they're like, woo! Woo! <laughs> woo! <laughs> woo! <laughs> just want to see how long I can tickle you guys. <laughs> uh, I don't really like going to the hairdresser, it's not my thing. I just never know what to say. I always end up saying, I just want something really different. And I realize what I'm trying to say is, I just want to change my face. <laughs> I want to look like Emma Watson. <laughs> I want to smell like candy all the time. I want to look like I care. <laughs> Please, take the dead look out of my eyes. <laughs> uh. I have a boyfriend that's real, <laughs> and I don't, uh, we've been together for a while. I don't really call my period my period to my boyfriend anymore. I just come running out of the bathroom shouting, I have good news! <laughs> Such good news! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm not pregnant. <laughs> it happens every time. Like, the thing is, having a baby wouldn't even break the bank because it's already so, so broken. <laughs> Like, I am on birth control, though, and it's like a really sensitive thing. It kind of sucks. Like, if I miss a pill, I'll have another period. It's just how it works with my body. So I'll miss a pill, I'll have a period, I'll have a second period, and after the third period, it just becomes an ellipsis. <laughs> I'm like, what happens next? <laughs> Is there a god? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a middle school educator. That's what I do for a living. <laughs> Thank you. I wish that the kids reacted that way. <laughs> um, sometimes, like, the kids like to call me out on stuff. Like, a girl came up to me the other day, and she was like, Miss, you have ripped jeans on. That's a dress code violation. You have to change. And I was like, good thing I'm an adult, and I don't have to do that. <laughs> she continued further and was like, but Miss, that's not fair. If I had ripped jeans on, would you make me change? And I was like, no, because I'm not a narc. <laughs> of course not. God, I don't get paid enough to do that. Plus, snitches get stitches. Everybody knows that. <laughs> uh, I like to play this game at work called The Whitest Thing I've Ever Heard. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever done this, but uh, I used to think that the whitest thing I'd ever heard was Oh, that documentary was so good, I can't even listen to a podcast right now. <laughs> then I heard something else. <laughs> and the whitest thing I've ever heard is, I took mushrooms, and Jesus told me to help the inner city black children, so that's why I'm a teacher. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> What? Jesus didn't tell him to do that. He told himself to do that. <laughs> His subconscious told him. I think I'm just jealous because, like, he chose to work with kids, but I work with kids because I screwed up in life. <laughs> like, 
made one too many mistakes and I'm afraid to admit that I like it. <laughs> uh, my mom found out that I do stand up and she immediately started writing her own material. <laughs> Um, so this is my mom if she were to do stand-up for you. Should we bring her up? Should we do it? <laughs> okay. This is Josie Reed. Josie Reed. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't do Facebook, all right? I do face-to-face, -face, am I right? <laughs> all right. I don't do smartphones, because I'm smart, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't do GPS. I do PMS. Get the frick out of my way, am I right? Get out of here. Get out. Get out. Get out of here. Get out. Get out. Get out of here. Get out. Get out. Oh, God. Went to the doctor for a checkup. Said everything was all right, uh, but he was concerned about the way my lips move when I laugh. <laughs> oh, God. My husband's an alcoholic. <laughs> I hate my daughter so much. <laughs> all right, that was Josie Reed, everybody. Wow. <laughs> She gets so dark at the end, <laughs> so dark. Uh, we did have like a lot of family issues growing up, but instead of going to a therapist to solve them, we just went on really long road trips. <laughs> Worked it out that way. My mom was in the front like, why do you drink so much? And my dad's like, it's not my fault. And I'm in the back like, I'm still Jimmy from the block. Used to have a little, now I have a lot. No, 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 no. My brother was like, shut up, Gabby. Everyone can hear you. And I was like, oh, I'm being too loud. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> so much fun. Uh, I'm going to get off on this one. This is a really sad moment in life. Uh, I hope this never happens to you. This is my impression of an empty ketchup bottle. <laughs> Seriously? This <laughs> had to happen today. <laughs> God, why? Why today? Uh, thank you so much. Give it up for Latinos all around and your host. <laughs> Don't leave. Uh, thank you, Gabby. Do you have anything coming up? Is there a place where people can track you down? Like, do you have, do you have a Twitter? Can people follow you and, and get all of your insights? Um, I am super bad at social media, but if you want to request me on Facebook, it's totally fine. Gabby Gutierrez Reed. I'll be hosting at El Torito on May 11th for JT Habersat. That'll be really cool. May 17th, I'm on Woke Up Stand Up. May 18th, I'm on Seahorse No Seahorse at Fort Greene. And uh, May 25th, Comedy Super Jam at Mutiny Information Cafe. Awesome. Thanks, Gabby, so much. Have a good night. Thank you. One more time, one more time. Come on, all the way for Gabby. We have the great privilege of another comedian. Uh, it's Adrian Mesa. Is Adrian around here? Oh, look. Look, yeah, no, all the way. It's time. It's time. It's time. Give it up. Come on. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yes. You get it up for my friend, eh? Very Latino man. We're all Latinos tonight, right? I just actually found out I was Latino. I didn't know until I filled out. I filled out like a census form and asked me if I was Latino slash Hispanic. I was like, ooh, it's a transition. Because <laughs> I was Hispanic growing up in the 80s, and now we're Latinos. And, uh, and now we're becoming Latinx, my nephew told me. We're Latinx now. There's no gender to it. Latinx. Not Latino, Latina. Latinx. 
which sounds like I'm a uh, part cat person. Latinx. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. I never got used to Latino. It always sounded like a breakfast cereal to me. <laughs> like, start your day off right with a bowl of rice flavor buff Latinos. <laughs> now, con delicious marshmallows. <laughs> Yellow chickens. <laughs> Black beans. <laughs> Green cards. Latinos brand cereal. Now con más azúcar. <laughs> the horse comes in for no reason. Deliciosos. <laughs> ¿Por qué de caballo? Is that too, was that too many bilingual terms right, up the, right out of the gate? I'm bilingual, so. It's like a superpower I have, you know? I feel like I have it. I have it ready. I could use it, you know? Like the other day, there was a, there was a Latina, okay? Typical Latina ordering a sandwich. It was a sandwich place. And I knew she was Latina because she had a house coat on, floral print, <laughs> curlers in her hair, finely groomed mustache. Latina! She was struggling trying to order lunch. She's like, hey, I can, um, uh, uh, I, how much cheese, please? How much cheese, please? The dude behind the counter was one of these like Italian sandwich lords. You know, don't take no guff. Excuse me, sweetheart. I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. You want what? How much what? I can, I don't, I, um, how much is, please? How much is? Listen, lady, I'm not a mind reader. You gotta tell me what you want, and I'll tell you how much the price. Look at the huge menu board right there. All right, you pick your choice of sandwiches, follow the freaking dots, boom, boom, boom. You'll find your monetary unit. I see your face like, I, I, I don't, I can't, I, I. And that's when I stepped in like a superhero, bilingual man. Bilingual man, solving problems the best that he can. <laughs> ¿Qué sucede aquí? What is happening? Hay un problema. Would you have a problem? Would you like almuerzo? ¿Qué quieres? ¿Qué deseas para almuerzo? What would you like for lunch? And her face like, ay, Superman, mira. Yo quiero un sandwichito jamón queso, quesito bueno, pero jamón, tú sabes, arbolito negro. ¿Tú sabes de lo que estoy hablando? Yes. Sir, she would like a black forest ham sandwich with extra sharp cheddar cheese. Sin tomate! No tomato. <laughs> Bilingual man. It's a power that I have. Thank you. This is nice. I liked that video earlier of the salsa dancing. I'm the king of salsa. El rey de salsa. If you happen to be an Americanita. Dude, I don't, I don't dance with any Latin ladies. You know, they'd start them off young, 20, 21 weeks old in the womb, doing little mambos, salsas, and the, I've seen some sonogram dance parties. It's <laughs> impressive. I only, I only dance with like ladies named Kristen, Kirsten, Caitlin, anything like that. I'm the salsa king. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll give you, this is how you dance salsa, okay? You put your dukes up, okay? And then you pretend like your ass is on fire. That's it. But you can't put it out. You cannot use your hands for this. They don't know. They don't know that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. They just trust me in my Latino magics. They're like, oh, Latin lover? Look at him go. Hold me with those cigar rolling hands. Kiss me with those mango eating lips, you beast of the Caribbean. Spin. You spin them. You spin. Spin. Dip. That's it. That's all you got to do. Rey de salsa. Don't give me one of no Latin ladies, man. Name Maria or some shit like that? No. no, 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 no. Come dance with me, big papi. Okay, fine. It's happened. I get in the middle of the dance floor all of a sudden. The spotlight hits on us. <laughs> She's doing like Cirque du Soleil spins. She's got a harness connected to her. It's a big production. She's lifting up the floor, doing, glistening around the skylight right there. And I'm sitting there and I become an Americanito. I'm like, wowie zowie. Is that, how do we, okay, all oh, right, this is amazing. Um, I, I lose rhythm, I don't even. Dip me? Okay, you're dipping me. All right, I'm being dipped. I'm the dip, the dippy. I am Cuban, I don't know if I mentioned that. I'm a Cuban being from a Miami. Oh, yeah. 
Florida. It's nice coming here. I became a Mexican like that as soon as I moved here, which is great. New fried things to enjoy. You know, my dad told me, he's like, oh yeah, hook up with a Mexicanita. They're the best. That's what I, I'm still looking. Maybe tonight's the night. I don't know. I went to Cuba though recently. I finally went to Cuba. A Cuban? Cuban didn't go to Cuba? I know. I know. Embargoes and such. <laughs> finally went there. I went on the search for the most perfect Cuban sandwich. And uh, they ran out of ham that month. <laughs> and they haven't had cheese in weeks. So more rum for me, I guess. But one thing about uh, Cuba that I enjoy, if you ever get there, there's like a musicality in the, in the just the air, you know? It's just like, I was trying to fall asleep and all I, first I heard like two cocks crowing, roosters, I should say. I'm waking up, I'm like, what is happening? Where's that bass line coming from? So many musicians in Cuba, just is like wafting in there. There was some lovers fighting, some fighters loving. I'm not sure what was going on, but it was rhythmic. Oh yeah, no my thing. It's fantastic. This is nice, man. I like this. This is a good job. I like doing comedy. You know, my dad, my dad, he came to this country, and he's my hero. He really, truly my hero. He came to this country, 62, Cuba, started off as a dishwasher, then he worked his way up to top cocaine dealer in, uh, <laughs> actually, no, that was Scarface. My bad. Wrong hero. No, my dad, he, he actually... Did the whole the Cuban American dream, you know? Came in, dishwasher and was, and then became a, law, a lawyer and a professor. Yeah, that's a hard act to follow. My, my dad was like, my son, my only son, it is time for you to go to college. Have you thought about college? I'm like, I can't follow this. His, this is too amazing. I, I have to be like a, like a doctor president. It would be the only thing to top him. I was like, no, I don't want to go to college, I told him. I want to be a comedian. You see his face, just like scout, a uh, comedian, a clown, <laughs> un payaso. Very proud I will be on my song, the clown. You know, there's a college you can go to. Ringnam, Bailey, Barnum, and no sé qué, Surcos. University for clowns. I know what I get you for Christmas. Big red shoes, nos. Dum. It was my Latin chunk. Got it all out. Was that too much, too much, too much heat for you? Was that too much? I'll Denver it up. I went to Whole Foods recently. <laughs> I did. When I first moved into in town, I went to Whole Foods. I figured I'd get that checked off the list. You know, it's a very Denver thing, Colorado. And uh, I went to throw away my garbage because uh, I had lunch in the place. And I went to throw away the stuff, and I had a panic attack <laughs> trying to figure out what garbage went into what hole. Because you guys are obsessed with that here. I don't know. On the East Coast, you know, when we throw it out, we put it in a hole. It goes in a barge, and they send that to New Jersey. I don't know. I don't know where it goes. But here it's like, is it compost? Is it landfill? Is it, I'm trying to figure it out. They have like a little picture, you know, with other pictures. And I'm like, I'm like, what is that? I don't know what this is. I'm breaking things down. People are staring, you know, the whole foodians that live there. It's like their church. They were like pointing at me. He's ruining the earth. He's ruining the earth. I panicked. What I ended up doing was just eating my own garbage. I was like. I was like, this is definitely the most green option at this point. <laughs> so, it's working out for me. A Cuban in, in Colorado, Colorado Cuban. Let's go salsa dancing a time, huh? How about that? All right. One more time for your host, all right? Brent? Thanks, man.
So, uh, I, I appreciate it. You're, you're really funny. Thanks. Yeah, I, I bet people will tell you that, I think, I imagine. Not but enough, huh? Jerks. Enough. So, tell me, though, how can we learn more about you? How can we find out? How can we track you? How can we, like, sort of, like, mildly stalk you? Not, like, the throw rocks at your window sort of stalk you, but, like, the go-to-your-shows kind of stalk you. Well, uh, you know, go on the Twitter. I got uh, my handle, Mesadilla. It's like quesadilla, but a mesa, like my last name. Uh, you can always go to Comedy Works. I'm a regular there. Check it out. I'll be there every, you know, every other week or so like that. And, uh, and also I do a food and comedy podcast called Three Course Comedy. And uh, yeah, I've been doing, been doing it for like five years. And uh, and we got a lot of great guests, you know, a lot of uh, comedians traveling from L.A., New York, and stuff like that. So, nice. Where can we find that? Anywhere podcasts are found, like iTunes or whatever. How do you yeah, find that? You know, it's on iTunes. You know, Bean Pod, whatever. You know, whatever listening thing. But also check it out on Sex Pot Comedy. Yeah. That would be the all our archives is right there. So like five years of uh, podcast right there. So nice. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Yeah. One more time. All right, so I've been promising three comedians. We have one more coming up. We also, I want you all to know, have a, we will be passing a tip bucket. We unfortunately cannot pay our talented talent. Um, so you have to. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. We will be having that around. Right now we have our, our, our final comedian. Recently had a, a really successful series of sold out shows that I hope to be talking about afterwards. Um, but everybody, why don't we just give it up for Rick Bryan? Come on. One more time for your host, Brandon. Come on, let him hear it. What's up, everybody? Orale! Happy Cinco de Mayo! Cuatro de Mayo, whatever. Right? We don't care, huh? We're celebrating all week long. That's how we do it. And we're talking, well, Joe was talking about it earlier, about the battle. You know what happened with the Cinco de Mayo? Do you know why we celebrate it? Nobody knows, huh? But everybody likes to drink. Huh? We're a bunch of alcoholics. That's why we celebrate it. Actually, the story went, like, 1871, President Benito Juarez borrowed money from France. The following year, France was like, wee oui, wee, oui, we would like our money. <laughs> Mexico was like, what money, Holmes? <laughs> I know what money you're talking about. That sounds like my relative. <laughs> so the story goes, 6,000 Frenchmen came to take over those 2,000 Mexicans, get their money back. Those Mexicans did not pay. The French got their butts kicked. The Mexicans did not pay back that money. That is why today we celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Arale! And how do we celebrate it? By getting all loaded and cruising really slow up and down Federal Boulevard, baby. <laughs> we don't got permits for our floats, but our cars cost more than those floats are made. We make our own parade out there, right? Yeah. How do we get away with that annually? It's like it's okay to drink and drive as long as you keep it under five. <laughs> I burnt myself on the way over here, man. I went to go light a blunt, you know, to relax before the show, and I couldn't find a lighter. My business partner stole my lighter. All of a sudden, I see one of those ancient lighters rolling around on the ground. You know what I'm talking about? The ones that plug into where you charge your phones? Yeah, that was made for cigarette lighters, if you didn't know that. Uh -huh. Don't be dumb, all right? It wasn't made for like a Bic. You can't recharge it or nothing like that. You can't just put it in there and get a reboot. It was a funky old device. It was like a cylinder. And then what you did was you pushed it in. And it was holding it. Sometimes it would hold it. And then when it popped out, it was red like a little stove top burner right there in your car for you, for your cable. <laughs> it was a dangerous item. <laughs> Sometimes it didn't hold in though, right? Remember? You had to do like your only cal your calculations, like one 1,000, two 1,000, it's feeling warm, and then you pop it out. Well, this one wasn't glowing red. So what I do? I touched it. I was like, ah, get it off, get it off, get it off. Oh, it burnt me so bad, man. I have burnt myself. Didn't even have a joke for it. Just thought I'd tell you about it on the way over here. I now know why those things aren't around no more. They are dangerous. I couldn't even light my blunt neither. All I did was short out my fuse in my car. <laughs> Gonna have to replace it on the way home. I don't got one of the newer cars, if you were wondering. <laughs> my baby is 13 years old, and she started buying me hats for Father's Day. She started off with the fedoras. She's like, Daddy, you're on TV. You should look good. I'm like, all right, I ain't Bruno Mars, but let me see what I can do. 
And then I upgraded to the Cholo hats. What a lay for Cinco de Mayo. This is authentic. The same guy who made them for American Me and Blood In, Blood Out. I ordered it from California. What a lay. I don't know how I quite feel about them. It feels like a safari hat or something. And there's like a sun hat. You know, the more I try to act like a vato, the more I look like my grandpa. <laughs> Just becoming a viejo. That's all. <laughs> That's happening. We're in dickies and sun hats. I always wondered how they could see, you know, when they walk around like this. What's up? You can see perfectly, man. It's like a net I'm looking through. That's all. This must, must be what it's like for uh, brides when they get married, right? Looking through the veil. You can't quite see what's going on, but you're taking the plunge anyways. <laughs> Ladies, we appreciate that. <laughs> I matched it with the white people's clothes. What are they? I'm trying. I couldn't do the pants, though. I still have to have a loop for my hammer, okay? I am Mexican by day. I know why white people are wearing these coats, man. They got all kinds of pockets in them. I am carrying everything on me right now. I got my phone. I got my wallet. I got my weed. I got my gun. You can't tell, huh? <laughs> Calm down, people. It's, it's a knife. I'm Mexican. Come on, keep up, all right? I got three kids. Thank God I could have me a whole litter by now. Come on, you know as Mexicans, we're like gremlins. You just add water, we start popping out. That's not true, it's tequila. We like to party before I... <laughs> I'm, I'm not, no jokes, man. My grandma had 16 kids. Uh-huh, see, ha-ha, yeah. <laughs> I know she fed a couple of my uncles after midnight, too, because they are retarded. <laughs> and my auntie, she just kept feeding them. And feeding them. And feeding them, and feeding them, and feeding them. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's going on around here, man? Grandma and grandpa were like five foot three, 130 pounds. All 80 you are five foot three, 330 pounds. Oh, we got thyroid problems. Like, <laughs> not all y'all got thyroid problems, all right? Uh, I love her, grandma. God bless her. She's in the kitchen, wheels cut off, your legs cut off due to diabetes. But what is she doing? She's throwing lard into a big old vat. <laughs> Come here, mijo, eat, eat. I'm like, oh, no, I got an alcohol problem. I'm blowing out this way. I'm not trying to explode out this way. No Mexicans here with us? They're all still working, huh? <laughs> I have three kids. Any parents with us tonight? Yeah, I got to get out the house, don't we? Yeah. You got to love them, but, oh, I hate them. I'm sorry. You know, if they're out there watching right now, I love you, but, oh, you... <laughs> I understand why Homer kept grabbing Bart's neck after all of these years, man. I'm not talking about the little babies, all right? Not the cute, snuggly ones. Even after they poop themselves, they still smell like heaven. Okay, not those ones. Although, if you have those ones, go ahead and drop them. Oh, don't tense up on me now, okay? Stick with me. I'm in the future, all right? My kids are 17, 18 years old, okay? The babies, they call them bouncing babies for a reason, all right? They won't remember it, but you will. So when your son's standing this tall, 18 years old, just rah, 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 talking all that stuff to you, you just look at him and be like, <laughs> I remember you just bounced. He's like, what are you talking about? Like, don't even worry about it, player. That's why you had a little hard time graduating high school, but don't even worry about it, right? You did good. <laughs> no jokes, okay? Smack the kids from time to time. Mine graduated a year early with honors. Very proud father right here. Good job, Nico. I'm proud of you, buddy, out there in college right now. Now he's got a pill addiction or something or whatever they pick up in college, but hey, it's out of my hands, right? <laughs> They're spoiled, man. They, don't, they think they got everything. They have everything, but they think they have nothing. I took my son's computer, his smartphone, and the smart TV, and he was miserable. Just, oh, life sucks. I can't do nothing. I said, leave. Go do something, please. Get out of my house. He's like, I don't got no money. He's like, welcome to the real world, buddy. All right. Then I stopped and started thinking about it. What did I actually do to him? I took him back to a normal day of my childhood is all I've done. Well, I didn't have a cell phone at his age. We had pagers. You remember those? Mm -hmm. Everybody remembers them, but we weren't doctors, were we? No, but we had the pagers. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, just a homie right there. Let me call him back. You have to go to the wall to grab the phone. You know, it's attached to the wall. So my mom wouldn't ground me from the pager. She just ground me from the telephone. That was torture. I could see everybody was calling me, but I couldn't do nothing about it. I was like, just take the pager, please. Smart TV, what is that? I had a little 13-inch black and white television back in the day. 
I remember seeing Tommy Davidson at the Denver Improv. Y'all remember Tommy Davidson, Living Color? Yeah, he's like, oh, what's up, man? He's like, dude, I remember watching you on my little black and white 13-inch television with the blankets over my head so my mom wouldn't see the light. He's like, dang, we weren't on in the 70s. I was like, yeah, we was broke in the 90s, Doug. <laughs> and he liked that. I'm like, that one's going in the books. <laughs> <laughs> Kids spoiled, man. You know, I took all I did was put a regular day in my childhood, and that is just the worst for my son. I was like, you know what they did to me at 16? They took me to the desert, and they dropped me off with no toilet paper. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, they called it Hell Week. Yeah, look it up. If you didn't know, if your kids get out of hand, you can ship them off to the Aspen Youth Alternatives out there in Moab, Utah. Uh -huh. They take gangsters, and they, learn, they make fire. They teach them how to make fire with sticks. I don't know how that makes us better, but, you know, we're doing it out there. He goes, what happened? I was like, what do you wipe your butt with, he said. I said, what do you do when you have no leaves? He's like, I don't know. I was like, they give you a journal. You can tear up some paper, you know, and see if you can make a couple journal entries, but after a while, it tears up the culo. <laughs> It'd be all crazy. I said, or you could get origami, you know, go at it and bend up the paper so it's all soft, then your finger pokes through, and that's a whole other joke. I said, you don't know until you don't got toilet paper, boy. Don't look at me like that no more. He starts running his mouth at me, and I said, all right, I can't hit you. I'm going to break you down mentally. I remember when you were retarded. He goes, Dad. It's like, dude, you couldn't do nothing. You couldn't walk, couldn't talk. You just pooped on yourself. You drooled all over the place. It was embarrassing. I was trying to introduce you to people. I had to hold up your head, man. You couldn't even hold up your head. I was like, look at my baby. Isn't he special? Look at my special little guy right there. He's getting mad. He's like, this isn't funny. He starts turning red. I was like, oops, somebody about to poop themselves, aren't they? He's like, this is funny. I said, keep messing with me, boy. I'm going to tell everybody. So, son, if you're out there watching, that one was for you, baby. <laughs> they say if you want to make it in this industry right here, you got to get on TV. That is a load of crap. I have been on Cops three times, and I have gone nowhere, man. <laughs> when I was born, my name is Richard Anthony Romero. When I was nine, my mom remarried. She changed my name to Richard William Bryan. She said, if you want to make in this world, you're going to want to be white. I was like, dang, mother. You didn't take into account how I was going to look later on in life, did you? I almost looked like the little emblem for Lowrider magazine at this point, OK? We're not fooling anybody here. I was going to change my name back to Romero until I seen who you guys elected the president of the United States. I think I'm going to ride this Brian name out for at least four more years. My name's been Rick Bryan. Happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody! <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Great set. Great set. I, I understand you recently had a, a, a stint somewhere doing something that was super rad where a lot of people saw it. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm always at the Denver Improv. Yeah, it's Denver Improv in Northfield Stapleton all the time. Sold out shows, man. You can find me out there doing it all the time. They're calling me, man. To, you know, come out there and host. I'll be featuring. Headline one time. We're going to keep on. If y'all can come out and support me, that'll happen more often. But yeah, Denver Improv out there in Northfield Stapleton, man. Awesome. Where else can we find you? Where can we, where can we hear your comedy? Rick Bryan Comedy. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can just Rick, look up Rick Bryan Comedy, or I got my own website. Follow me. See what's going on. I'm going to be down to Looney's tomorrow night down in Colorado Springs. So, yeah, happy Cinco de Mayo. Great job, dude. Thanks so much. Have a great night. Thank you. We are passing the tip bucket. If we aren't, we will be momentarily. Please, please contribute generously to these talented folks. We have a couple of PSAs while we set up for our musical guests, so let's check those out. Thanks. Putting the power. Power. Putting the power of media. And technology. Into the hands. The hands. The hands of the people. The people. The people. Denver Open Media. That's Denver Open Media. Están viendo Denver Open Media. Did you know that you can be on TV too? Here at Denver Open Media, you can get everything you need to start your own production. Get educated, be entertained, and get engaged at Denver Open Media. Have you ever been talking with your friend at 3 a.m. and said, man, we should make a video about that? This is where that happens. This is where somebody can come and represent their voice, their community, their country, and their culture. Come to denveropenmedia.org and learn how to be a member. Come join our community of media makers here at Denver Open Media. Head to denveropenmedia.org to learn more and sign up for our tours every first and third Wednesday of the month to find out what you can do here. That's Denver Open Media. 
Like what you see? Here at Denver Open Media, you decide what plays. So head on over to denveropenmedia.org to vote on your favorite shows and find new ones. The more votes, comments, and views a video gets, the more it's played on our channels. Community-powered media, right here at DOM. I've been an intern at Denver Open Media for a few weeks now, and I've already gained experience in camera work, lights, microphones, you name it, they got it here at Denver Open Media. All right, everybody, let's give it up for El Javi. Come on, really loud, uproarious! <laughs>
All right, thank you. Thank you guys. My name is El Javi from Mexico City, Jordi from Barcelona. And uh, this summer we're celebrating three years in Denver, and uh, it's been a good home for us. Uh, I was gonna wear my Stormtrooper outfit because it's May the 4th, not Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> also, bad jokes too. I was following the comedians. But talking about home, uh, our latest album is called A Gypsy Journey Part 2, El Refugio, which means the refuge. And uh, we definitely have taken refuge here in Denver. And this song is for you guys. <laughs>
Well, we play live all the time, but when you have uh, cameras and you know that there's thousands of millions of people watching us on TV right now. <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm, my jokes are good today, huh? Mia Angela de Lourdes.
Thank you. Well, a month ago, we released a music video dedicated to Paco de Lucia. It's called Recuerdo a Paco. And we had Mia dancing. So we're going to invite her back on stage. We're going to play this song, Recuerdo a Paco.
Mia. Well, uh, what was it, five years ago or so? I left my second home. I consider my second home after Mexico was Los Angeles, California. And I uh, had 13 years of life there. And at some point, I had to say goodbye. And uh, it was a hard time. And I had to say goodbye with a song. And this is it. It's called California. Thank you. Well, Jordi and I, we met in Mexico City, what, like six years ago or something? Uh, <laughs> and uh, we've, and a half. <laughs> and uh, since we met, we became brothers right away, even before we started playing. And so we've kind of, uh, gone through a lot together, traveling, writing music. And the first song, of one of my songs that when I was traveling a lot, 
and I finish it with him. We finish it in Mexico City and then in Los Cabos a little. And uh, it was like our first collaboration as a duo, and this is it, this is called Trip.
Thank you. All right. That should be it, no? <laughs> uh, encore. There you go. Uh, well, I know there's a lot of people moving here to Denver daily, monthly, yearly, and uh, we all have different reasons. And uh, the reason why I came here was to be with my daughter, Olivia. And this is her song. This is Olivia.
Thank you so much. Jordi Marin on the drums. I think Mia left, or is she here? No, there she is. Changed outfits. Thank you, Mia. We have time for one more or what? Yeah? There we go. We call our own anchors.
All right, everybody, give it up. Give it up, give it up! Come on! Oh, hello, everybody! Beautiful work. Thank you so much to both of you for being here tonight. We, we just have a few more housekeeping things tonight, everybody. Thanks for, for coming, but don't, don't file out yet because, because you very well might be a winner. Uh, yeah, you might be a winner. You might be a winner. So uh, I'm going to bring up the, the lovely Jameson up here. He's going to come up here, and here he is. He's bringing, bringing the bull of, of, of potential, potential winners. If you didn't sign up, I guess you can leave, but you probably shouldn't because, it's, because this is going to be really engaging. Um, so we have our first winner, and what do you want to do first? Do you want to do the Comedy Works yeah. ticket? So we have uh, two Comedy Works tickets, do you know? Just one. Okay, so we have a Comedy Works ticket for somebody here, and the person is, do you want to say it? Anna Kane. Ann Kane. And Annie, Ann Kane. Either way, you're a winner. We're going to email you. Everybody loves this. Okay, so the, the next winner is a basic membership here at Denver Open Media. And do you want to read this one? Yes, Kelsey Clark. All right, so those are our two winners. Thank you so much, Jameson. I really appreciate it. We're going to run through our sponsor list. Thank you, sir. We're going to run through our sponsor list really quickly, if you don't mind. We'd love to thank our sponsors. We really appreciate them. Westward, westward.com. Check them out. Sexy Pizza, that's right, and Sex Pot Comedy, as well as Crazy Mountain Brew just down the street. Intrepid Sojourner, also just on the other side of the street. El Cubanasso, Food Truck. They did a great job. Really good food. Comedy Works. And KGNU. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks to our partners, Latin Life Denver. Thanks to our talent. As you're filing out the door, hey, as you guys are leaving, this is important. Put some money in the bucket for the talent. They're lovely. We don't pay them. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great night. Come back. See us next first Friday. Bye, guys. Thanks.